Today we are going to dive into some sourdough. I have a separated sourdough starter, which you may have seen something like this before, and I'm going to show you exactly what to do and what to bake. Join me now. Welcome to Modern Homestead Alaska. We are Erin and Jessica Milnes. We are building a modern homestead outside of Wasilla, Alaska with the help of three of our children. Our second son, Caleb, our daughter, Cody Ann, and the youngest of our family, Wyatt, along with our three dogs, Tipper and Daisy, and the newest addition, Roberto. Starting out, before we get back into our sourdough, we need to bring this sourdough back to life. If you have ever found that you've left your re sourdough in the refrigerator, maybe just a little bit too long, and you have a separation, that top is called hooch. It's some sort of alcohol. You have to mix that back into the sourdough before you move on to discarding and feeding your sourdough. Without that, <laughs> you will just have a dead gloop. I'm not quite sure. For me, I have moved kind of into feeding the sourdough in thirds. So on this ball mason jar, there is lines. So I do a third of sourdough starter, a third of water, and a third of flour. I mix the water into the sourdough starter kind of to get it loosened up before I add the flour in. This goes to the rule of you have to at least double your sourdough. So if you have an ounce of sourdough, you have to have at least an ounce of water and flour. And in this measurement, it just makes it really easy to look at, easy to figure out, and then sourdough should be the consistency of pancake batter. And then I'm just going to leave my sourdough starter on the counter and I'm going to wait until it at least doubles and then falls back down. This go around took just over 24 hours, but here you can finally see it rich and bubbly. It has completely come back to life. There is no issues. There is no rancid smell. There is nothing coming off of this sourdough that would be alarming. And so now we are going to get baking. All right, let me just start off. We have a super busy couple of weeks ahead of us. It's the end of the school year. We're getting ready to plant the garden outside. We're trying to get so much done now that we can actually be outside doing things. And Aaron and Caleb are working nights. Aaron's also working during the day. It just is so crazy. And I thought I would do a couple of sourdough recipes, wake up my sourdough, and have a couple of things in the freezer that they can just grab and go on their way to work in school and all the craziness that we have going on. These are things I've never shared with you on the channel before. They're kind of on that sweet side of breakfast. So why don't we get right into it? The first thing I'm gonna say is, we got the recipes today off of Little, look at me, knocking me around there. Little Spoon Farm. Here's the thing with sourdough. <laughs> I try all sorts of different people's sourdough recipes for all sorts of different things. And the truth of the matter is, is whether it's my sourdough or my location, all of that, your humidity, it all plays a role in how your sourdough behaves. Honestly, I've had the best luck with her recipes turning out. That doesn't mean I don't use lots of other people's or try lots of other people's and I'm always appreciative when you guys share uh, who your favorite sourdough people are. And I really do truly go look those up. In fact, the needy homestead, um, I know she's healing and recovering, but I started following her due to a recommendation of one of you guys. So we are going to start the day off with a coffee cake. The first thing I am checking for, because I'm completely out of milk in the house and I have a little bit of 
heavy cream, but I don't have any buttermilk. And we use Azure's buttermilk powder. And so I want to get this mixed up. So I do need one cup of buttermilk. So it's gonna be one cup of water and three tablespoons of this buttermilk powder. And then we'll pull the recipe together. But if you are using something like this, get it going first, like read the recipe and get going the buttermilk powder or your milk or whatever it is so that it has time to kind of absorb the water before we just dump it right in. This recipe calls for nuts. I went ahead and pre-chopped some, although I have made it without nuts. So if nuts are not your thing or you're allergic, whatever, just go ahead and skip this. So we're gonna start with the crumb topping and then set it aside. So I have right here, half of a cup of flour into the bowl of a cup of brown sugar into the bowl, two, two, right, two teaspoons cinnamon. That's, that would have been bad, that's a tablespoon. Let's do a teaspoon. Two teaspoons cinnamon. And then one cup of pecans that I chopped. And, Four, we're gonna fork this together and then add four tablespoons of melted butter. The next thing we want to pull together is kind of the center cinnamon sugar filling, which is a third of cup of light brown sugar, a third of a cup of flour, and two teaspoons of cinnamon again. And I know what you're thinking. I kind of thought like that's a lot of cinnamon between the two, the topping and the center. And believe it or not, it was not overwhelming at all with the cinnamon, but you kind of whisk that together and set it aside. Butter or spray your nine by nine or eight by eight. I forget what I'm using. I think it's supposed to be a nine by nine baking dish. And it does get really poofy, but it doesn't spill over the dish. So butter or spray that with something nonstick. For the actual cake batter, I just went ahead and have two cups of all-purpose flour. I'm going to add two teaspoons of a baking powder to the flour. It doesn't need to be sifted. This is kind of an all-purpose organic flour. And then we are going to add a teaspoon of sea salt to it. That's our dry ingredients. We're then going to kind of whisk that together so that it's incorporated. And then we're going to do the wet ingredients separately and we're going to combine the two. So we are going to start off with eight tablespoons of softened butter. This is softened at room temperature. Kind of whisk that around a little bit. You, of course, could have done this in a mixer. You do not have to hand mix things like I chose to do on this day, but it's really, it doesn't make a big enough difference. So one bowl works for me. That's a half of a cup of light brown sugar that I am whisking in. And then I'm going to add in a half of a cup of white sugar. Next for the wet ingredients, I do crack my eggs because these are farm fresh eggs and you just never can tell what's going on until you crack it. I am going to incorporate two eggs. Um, I just do one at a time, like I said, because I crack them into separate bowls, but get those mixed in really well. After I got both eggs incorporated, I added in a half of a cup of a good quality sour cream as well as two, remember the buttermilk, the one cup of buttermilk that we had started earlier. I am going to add a half a cup of the sourdough starter um, right to the buttermilk. Whisk that 
together and get that in the wet ingredients. All right, we do now have everything prepared and ready. So we are going to mix in either a half or a third of the flour mix into the wet ingredients at a time and then bring this together. It's gonna be very reminiscent of a cake batter, which is basically what this batter is, is sort of like cake. Oh no, I had forgotten two teaspoons of vanilla. So make sure that you do not forget the vanilla. Luckily, I hadn't already layered the cake together before I double checked. But the other thing was I had left out or got out the ingredients and I'm looking at the vanilla and thinking, did I use that? No, I hadn't. But I went ahead and got the vanilla in. I am going to go in with half of the cake mix. This is just a buttered dish. It's not buttered and floured. I know that would be kind of a more traditional way of doing cake, but that was not necessary in this instance. And then that entire center layer that was the sugar, the cinnamon, and the flour, you sprinkle that over and it does get enough moisture from the cake mix that it sets up, but it does in the end product have this really beautiful center sugar cinnamon layer to it. And then you go in with the other half of the cake mix. I did it nice and slowly so I wasn't swirling it together, but I was really making sure that we had layers and I didn't dump it in the center pushing things out. So I kind of strung it around, pushing it around. Hey, I would like to mention if you haven't yet and you're more interested in some of the cooking, the preserving and all the things we have going on, on our homestead, which it is a crazy gardening season, would you do me a favor and hit that subscribe button? Ring the bell, you'll get notifications. I'd really appreciate it. Moving on to the topping, we just put that whole topping on. It kind of clumps together, but it was lovely when it came out. It was not hard and it absorbs, again, just enough moisture from the cake that it really does hold together super well on top of the cake. Make sure you preheat your oven. It needs to be at 350 degrees. Bake it for 40 to 45 minutes until a toothpick entered in the center comes out clean. And then you know that it's done and this cake is beautiful golden brown. All right, it's a little warm trim it up but this came out so beautiful i cannot wait and we'll cut it into pieces and i'll wrap the pieces with a little bit of um, parchment paper and then either pop it in the fridge or pop it in the freezer and then everyone has the ability to just kind of grab something as they're heading out. I'm gonna try a mess. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, nice. Oh, but it's way hotter still than I thought. But I wanted to show you the layer in here. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, okay, well, since we insist, we'll try one bite. Mmm. That is so good. That's a really good. There's a tartness to that coffee cake, and it is not overly sweet at all. Mmm. That's going to go over really well. Let's move on to the next recipe. For the next recipe, we are moving on to the next day. I did have to fill up my flour container and I wanted to touch base for just a second as this is a sourdough video. I do feed my sourdough this unbleached organic flour 
which Costco had discontinued, but they've brought back an unbleached organic uh, flour again. So we are in luck. These chocolate chip scones are one of the very first sourdough recipes I've ever made. Um, and I was just learning with sourdough and I found these and we made them all the way back in Arizona and I just absolutely have loved them ever since. They're one of our favorites. If I have enough sourdough, I'll do two of them and bake them off and then just wrap them like we did the um, coffee cake. Um, if I don't have enough sourdough, I'll just feed the sourdough and we'll make something new tomorrow. It's no big deal. So two cups of flour, half of a cup of sugar, and then half of a teaspoon of salt. I know I have salt over here. And then two teaspoons baking powder it says to grade the cold so I just pulled this out right at the very beginning the cold stick of butter and then you kind of use a pastry knife and you pull it all together and honestly um, I have just always I don't want to clean, I don't want to clean the butter out of the grater. So I'm just going to use the pastry knife. Cutting butter in is just so simple. So what I was trying to say is the recipe, if you follow it, tells you to use a grater for the butter and then you're going to use a pastry knife. And me in my kitchen, I want to hand wash as few dishes as possible and so I just use the pastry knife for the entire recipe. Although you could, of course, grate it up and then use the pastry knife. I have linked these recipes in the description box. I really wanna give credit where credit is due and I think this person has done an incredible job on her sourdough. To the dry ingredients, we are gonna do one cup chocolate chip. I have dark chocolate out if I want to do that, but right now I'm going to do these super mini ones. Let's go in. That'll be super cute. But regular chocolate chips, it really doesn't matter. Burr, tip out. Now for the wet ingredients. For the wet ingredients, we're going to do one large egg. Perfect. Half of a cup. Look at how rich and bubbly that is. Starter. Two teaspoons vanilla and two tablespoons I'm out of heavy cream so we're not going to worry about that but we will use some half and half instead no big deal bring this together like a biscuit dough honestly you can leave it in the bowl and then just uh, get it all brought together or what I do is make a big well in the middle and you do need to because this is a scone and you treat it like a biscuit you do have to make sure that those chocolate chips are in there beforehand. You would not mix them in later like a cookie dough or something like that. Um, that would totally ruin the texture of the scone. So I make a well like you would with pasta or biscuits or anything like that. 
I get a bench scraper out and then I just gently and slowly cut the wet into the dry and then I'm going to finish this entire recipe from right here on the countertop. Even though I've clipped out part of the video, um, bringing it together, it just goes together so quickly. I just kind of scrape it off, but I'm being so gentle with it. Like I'm not trying to mix it together. I'm trying to bring it together, which I know those terminologies might be used differently in different parts of the, the country or the world. Um, but trying to kind of show you like I just scrape in the flour mixture into the wet and then just sort of press it together gently and then keep it broke up. That's kind of what I'm doing is spreading it out and breaking it up. I again don't want a cookie batter. And then by hand without adding any extra flour or anything like that. I press the dough out into, I did a nine inch circle, but you could certainly do an eight inch. Um, they would be a little bit fatter, or if you liked a thinner, crispier scone, you could do a bigger um, circle. But for me, I think the nine inch is the perfect size. And then using the bench scraper, I just cut it into eight equal pie size portions. Here's a funny story. I thought on the first scone that I ever made that you just left it in this circle and I put the circle on the baking dish and I um, then cut it and then the middle was really un underdone and the edges were done. And then I learned later that you actually take the scone apart and bake each individual triangle as if a biscuit. So if you can imagine taking a biscuit dough and just leaving it whole and then cutting it later, uh, the center does not work out super well with that. And then after I get them on the baking dish, uh, it does again call for, uh, sorry, drew a blank there for a second. It calls for cream and we have half and half. Um, that is no big deal. This is just helping that icing sugar or an organic sugar, whatever you want to top yours with to stick. And so I just did a little half and half on the top of the scones and then used a good, beautiful little sprinkle of sugar on top. I did mean to say after we get the sugar on top, they go in the refrigerator, they chill for 30 minutes while we preheat the oven to 400, and then we're gonna bake them for 20 to 25 minutes. That gives me enough time to actually put together the second set of scones, and the centers are a little different. So on the second one, instead of doing a cup of chocolate chips, I'm just going to use my measuring cup and I'm gonna fill it with the different things. But I am still gonna do chocolate, but this time I'm gonna do dark chocolate. And I just chopped up a handful of pecans. There's some dark chocolate in there. I'm gonna use some coconut. And you can basically just mix anything you want in these scones. And then um, some dried cranberries. So now I have one cup of a few different things. Those mixed in. And then I just built the scone kind of the same way. It's all of the same ingredients. But like I was saying, there is one cup of different things in this one. And I have done all sorts of different mix-ins with this base recipe. 
it is a sweet recipe because there's sugar in it. And so this would not be the one that I would add like cheese or bacon or ham or something like that to it. These are sweet scones. Um, they're mildly sweet. I do enjoy that about these recipes that I've shared with you today is that um, both of them are not overly sweet and it kind of curbs that sugary sweetness in the morning that you would get maybe from like a sugary cereal or something like that. I have so much enjoyed spending time with you guys today, having you in my kitchen, showing you some of the abuse my poor sourdough suffers as well as spent some time cooking with you. I didn't do a closeout at the end of this video, although I am going to show you show myself feeding the sourdough here in just a second as well as what these scones turned out i just invite you to hit that subscribe button ring the bell you get notification thumbs up and comments help our channel to grow and again i just really appreciate each and every one of you that have joined me in my kitchen today and spent some time doing some sourdough that's okay I'm going to scrape my sourdough down. I'm going to see where I'm at and I'm going to show you how to feed it. How's that sound? Okay. So just like in the beginning, I use these lines. The sourdough is here. Then I just want to fill it to the next line because you always want to over double. So this first line would be double. My simple math would be I could split it as long as it went like a third over the third. Anyway, just each line. <laughs> so the first line, I'm gonna just come up with water. I've heard this explain. It's a little harder to see on camera, but in person, the water is here now, which means the entire contents of it is right there. I like to get the sourdough a little bit dissolved in the water, okay mix that around it smells so good and fresh mm -mm -mm. okay so then what I do is add flour to the next line and it's very similar to like pancake batter or um, waffle batter something like that but it's not identical hey hold up I needed to pull the scones out of the oven but Essentially what I was trying to say is a, a cup of water, like a liquid cup of water and a cup of flour are not the same measurement or the same weight. So I just tried to fill up the same kind of surface area and I've just found like this amount of flour and this amount of water and it comes out like cake batter or pancake batter. And what I'm doing, when I'm doing this is I'm whipping air into it. The air allows for the good bacteria to grow, but air is also very, very important in killing off any bad bacteria that would sit in there and become stagnant or rancid. So as much as I abuse my <laughs> sourdough, it actually has served me super well years now and I've never had to start over okay so this took over 24 hours yesterday night and I didn't record it it finally hit kind of its peak and then this morning it had fallen all the way down it was hungry that's where we would call it like sourdough discard. So the recipes we've been kind of making at this point would be considered discard recipes. They're the bits of the sourdough that we wouldn't make bread necessarily with, but we would also just toss it away. So instead of tossing it away, we've made two batches of scones and the um, coffee cake with it. So we, to make bread though, you would want to use it when it was like nice and rich and bubbly and not as a discard, but we'll learn all that. Look at that. 
chocolate chip, sourdough, scones. Oh, aren't they beautiful? They are so fabulous.